Those of you that don't know, curling is like golf. <laughs> yeah. Hot, 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 for those of you that you have to have seen curling, I know you have because it's the it becomes the fascination of every Winter Olympics because it is like watching fucking golf. Yeah, nothing happens quickly. Nothing really happens actually. Right. It's just, but people get points for doing something, right? Yeah. And I love watching golf, so you know I'm into curling. <laughs> curling, it can be hours long matches. Yeah. And what it is is a flat sheet of ice, and on the end of the sheet of ice, there is a big bullseye on either side of the ice. And there, uh-huh. it's about, I'm going to guess 25 yards from one end to the other. I don't really know, but don't say 25 yards. And there are these big polished stones that yes. have handles on top of them. They look yeah, like, right. yeah, they look like almost like tires, but they're not tires. They're stones. And they're about. Um, like something you put on a steak, the grill. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, you take this handle, like yeah. something you would press a steak into, but mm-hmm. it's now glued on top of this very polished stones, mm-hmm. granite. And it's shaped like a donut, right? Or a tire. It's round. Yeah. And it weighs, I think it weighs like <laughs> 25. like a donut or a tire. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's shaped like a round. <laughs> so you're saying it's round. A round? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. You know, it goes it's circular. <laughs> circular sounds interesting. It's like a donut Say, can you a fix tire. my square tires on the old horse and buggy? <laughs> Breaks down every time it flips. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh. It shaped like a donut or a tire. I am a master I'm remember that. at describing things so for the round. podcast. Round. <laughs> a round. Yes, it's a round. <laughs> it's a round shaped object. Yes. But on the bottom, it's it's flat, okay. right? But it's, okay, they, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it looks like a donut, I right? Got it gets it. on the bottom, it's flat. Okay, gotcha. And then they stick this handle on top. It's like very heavy. It's 25 or something kilos. And <laughs> they... <laughs> They have these special shoes where they slide acl- across the ice yeah. for a few feet. And then they, on the, as they kind of on their knees, they slide the rock and they let it go ever so slowly, trying to get the rock in a certain position on that bullseye. And then each team takes a turn and they can knock each other's you know rocks around or whatever. It is the most ridiculous thing on ice. <laughs> it is, honestly. And what is the purpose of the person that's coming, you know, and, and sweeping okay. the ice as question. the stone comes down? That's a good question. And it's smooth. So the, the one thing that you'll notice about curling that's probably most people will recognize right away is that there are... As the rock is being let go, one person's throwing it or or throwing the stone. As the rock is being let go, for that 75 feet, there are often two people that are in front of it with these brushes. Yeah, and the brushes, they rub the brushes really quickly. And by making the ice smooth, they can change the direction and the speed of the rock. Uh-huh. So they can either make it smoother or they can make it rougher depending on who's which what kind of brush they have Mm -hmm. and so what the person who throws the stone will then direct the two people running in front of the stone basically sliding in front of the stone with these special shoes that they have on they're not ice skates they're like shoes with like smooth surfaces and and what they do is they they will brush it in a certain direction to try and get it to land exactly where they want it to land it's very weird and it's and it's like one of those sports that you just get entranced by you kind of do i love watching those and this is what you'll hear They'll show someone like I was watching the women the other day, right? The qualifying for the U.S. team, and she let the she let the rock go. Left, right, left, hold, hold, left, 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 and she'll scream at these two poor girls who are trying to brush as hard as they can. Wow! But they all do it. They all scream at each other so loud, and you know, and then they score a point, and everybody claps. This is there are whole stadiums that are set up with like six of sixteen of these ice ice. Yeah. Courts or whatever you call them. And then people drink beer and they, you know, they, so many people in the North are are really into this. They, it's a spectator sport. Yeah. I thought to myself the other night, Brian, this is the most ridiculous thing you have ever watched on TV (laughs) and you love it so much. But then it got me thinking. It's actually not the most ridiculous thing I've ever watched on sport. I've ever watched no, on TV. There's a lot. more. There are so many more stupid sports than, than curling and they're professional sports. 
people making our professional leagues. I've noticed this, that people have now... Made anything a sport. Anything. Anything a sport. And there are whole channels dedicated to these weird sports. ESPN Mm. now... ESPN, the actual channel ESPN, now has these going on on Saturday mornings and Sunday. You know, occasionally they used to throw in like a bowling league on Sunday morning. (laughs) And you'd be like, oh, interesting. They got bowling on ESPN. Uh Now they're doing like flip club and, you know, uh, know, (laughs) hide and go seek and like all this crazy (laughs) shit. (laughs) On the count of three, you're gonna hide. You're gonna try to find each other. The winner gets fifty thousand dollars and shall be the hide and seek champion. Yeah. So I started thinking, what are the dumbest sports that are currently consi- are have professional leagues, like televised professional leagues? The qualification was there has to be an actual sanctioning body, a league, right, that has rules and regulations and all that. Yeah. The, it has to be tel- televised or streaming, some something, some kind of live coverage, and it has to have commentators, which I think then elevates it to it an actual sport, right? Because if you're just watching two idiots, you know, I don't know, throw darts at each other's head, then that's not a sport. It's just two idiots throwing darts at yeah. each other's head. Yeah, the commentating we, is, is, is key. They have professional slapping. They have professional, professional slapping. Professional slapping. This is a thing. Professional slapping. You've never seen this? No. Oh, my God. We'll do a whole episode on this because this is crazy. <laughs> face these, slapping? Yes. These huge men uh-huh. slap each other, open-handed, slap each other. And oftentimes, they just knock each other right on the ground. They yeah. fucking knock out. But it's a thing, and it's a sport, and they do it for money. It's crazy, right? Wow. But I wanted to focus on uh, – and, and there is – commentators and money and sanctioning bodies in this slapping sport too. There are rules and regulations. And I don't know how the fuck they get to the bottom of this shit. But when I was a kid, like I'm sure you did with your siblings, we used to make up all kinds of sports. We were doing all yes, kinds of things. Sure. Yeah. You would, you know, entertain we, yourself. That's right. We would, uh, you know, take the bike and you had to, uh, you know, throw <laughs> the ball in the garbage can while you were riding down or, right. you know, if it was a rainy day, then we'd have some stupid thing. We were playing with a soccer ball in the house. Yeah, like, jump rope, you know, if you kick the ball, things. if the Fort ball building, yeah, that's right. All kind of stupid shit. <laughs> but these people took this shit and they made it into an actual sport where money is exchanged. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. First, uh, I want to get to one that I thought was really interesting and probably the most boring of the, let's call these, remember we were doing the music. Fringe Mark, sports. Remember we were doing Mark Gormley the other day? Yeah. And I couldn't remember what the name of the type of music mm-hmm. that this guy would be classified as. It's called outsider music coming from the outside, outside of the music industry uh-huh. and really from any kind of talent whatsoever. <laughs> and, yes. just, and just making up his own shit. Right. It's pure. Let's, let us call these outsider sports. Okay. okay? These outsider, outsider sports. sports. Outside of the MLB, the, you know, the ones that we all know. You have to be really weird to get in this category. And so I put four together for today and I put a, get a little commentary, a little clip of a commentary that goes on. So we might get a little taste of what's, what's happening <laughs> in these leagues. Okay. The oddest one that I found, the one that certainly is the most outsider is marble racing. Oh, marbles. Marbles. Like with marbles. Actual marbles. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know that when in the 1930s or, well, you know, 1930s, we used to race marbles all the time. <laughs> it was like, you know, watching porn. <laughs> marbles have been a thing for a long time. Oh, yeah. But never has anybody tried to make money off. I mean, you know, I had marbles, but I didn't even know what to do with them when I was a kid. Yeah, they were in I, a little bag. Yeah, they were in a bag. You just held them or you threw them around mm-hmm. and thought they were pretty or whatever. <laughs> right. But in the <laughs> 30s and 40s and 50s, kids used to play games with them. Yes. So... This is marble racing. This mm. is an actual race. Okay. There is a piece of board that is smoothed out in waves. Okay? So imagine like a table, that, but, but a wavy table has waves. Mm-hmm. The waves are numbered, one through ten. Each wave is numbered, one, two, three, four, five. The marbles are set up on a little plate up at the top. Uh, imagine it's coming down a little ramp, and then it's going over these waves, right? They set strategically set their marbles on this board at the top and then the board is released and then the marbles roll down the ramp and onto the waves. They're trying to see how far, how many waves they can crest on mm. the, on this wood, you know, track yep. without going to the very end, which is the pit. And then the marble will fall in the pit. You can't go in the pit. If you go, go in the pit, you disqualify. can before the pit. Yeah, go as far as you can before you go to the pit, right? Okay. This is a sport. People get paid to do this hmm. and there are spectators and there are commentators. In marble racing. Do you want to hear a little bit of marble yes, racing? Yes, okay. let's do it. And ooh, we get two in the catch basin, but it's one apiece. And this is actually a closer battle than what we thought. 
What exactly did you think <laughs> about larvals? <laughs> That's my it's question. Closer than yeah. we thought. Well, uh, the prognosticators had this one all wrong. The red marbles are clearly doing much better than the blue marbles. I thought the red marbles were in really, really shape for this competition. But as you can see, I don't know. They had a long night out of the office last night. I, I think the blue marbles are steroids. They're on steroids. <laughs> it's a fucking marble. How does all it? Right. They're all way the same. Yeah. How, do they, how does one do better than the other? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand this. Momo will move on. The whole rollers and the jungle jumpers. Ooh, jungle jumpers have lost one at the back. Both teams lose one in the catch basin. But look at those two rolling around for the rollers in the 10 <laughs> spots. I mean, come Whoa. on, really? <laughs> the, he, he hasn't made it to Joe Buck level. This uh, commentator, no. not yet. I think he's, this guy this is, is like he's the... He's interning. He's also the president and CEO of the Professional Marvel okay, Association, yep. is my sense. assumption. Uh -huh. And with a name like Jungle Jumpers, we can imagine that the average age of the player here is probably 13 yeah. or 47. One of the two. Right. <laughs> it's either the, one of the... Either way, these players are still living in their parents' houses. So I'm mm -hmm. just guaranteeing that. Yep. Yeah, that four really hurt the Jungle Jumpers. They lose by six in run two of 12. Primary and Balls of Chaos up next. <laughs> balls of balls Chaos. Balls of Chaos. <laughs> I can just see some of Wasn't that. Wasn't that your nickname in high school? It was Balls of Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it's my name in this current marriage. Yeah, balls of Chaos. Yeah, balls of Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, balls of... I can see the guy. Like, remember that guy from... Uh, uh, you know the movie, you know, never fuck with the balls of Jesus or whatever. <laughs> uh, what's that movie called? The Big Lebowski. Oh, yes. You know, don't fuck with the Jesus, you know, uh -huh. the Jesus. And he's like rubbing his balls. Yes. I can see the guy who's got this, you know, he's like, don't fuck with the balls of fury or whatever your name is. <laughs> Watch out for my balls! <laughs> These guys must take their marbles very seriously. Mm -hmm. As down they come, the waves too strong for several. This is an interesting strategic event that some of the marbles, they've kind of been scratching their heads on how to approach this. Do you want to sacrifice a back marble in order to give you the necessary push to get farther into the waves? Oh, so like one marble could push another marble? It all happens so fast. I just don't know. It's all, it's also it's boring. And, yeah, sport. <laughs> like if you, there's a tray, that tray has four lines up, four lines across by four lines down. Yeah. And there's. A, a whole, you know, a little marble holder. They can place their marbles going one, back and forth one at a time, I guess, determined by a coin toss. I have no fucking clue. And they can place them where they want to on that tray. Yeah. Then the tray is released and the marbles start to roll. Mm -hmm. I guess the only strategy here is where do you place the marble on that tray in order to get the maximum potential roll? And how does one ball fall after the other ball? Mm -hmm. The reality is, this is a complete game of chance. <laughs> yeah, like, there is, is no rhyme or reason to yeah. how a mar... I mean, I it guess really... phys there's physics involved. Yes. And you might understand physics. But you really have to take this a stretch to call this a sport. I mean, you really do. You what, do. Exactly what physical exertion is being had here, I don't know. But marble racing is a thing. And a thing that is watched by twenty to 30,000 people every event, Chrissy. Hmm. twenty or 30,000 people. We can't get 20 or 30,000 people listening to this fucking podcast. <laughs> Some teams are opting for that. Others have seen what happens exactly here. That push can sometimes be too strong, and you end up dumping several for zero. Look at that, the hazers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're going to have a sport like marbles, here's my opinion. <laughs> you should have an announcer like Joe Buck. Because that's the only way you're ever going to make this fucking interesting. Look at the red one coming down. The Look at the red one. The red one's going fast. Going fast. Going fast. Going fast. Going fast. Oh, my God. Scott! Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> you need to have somebody. Some excitement. Or some controversial yes. one, right? It's, I, I don't know. Looks like an Indian to me. <laughs> like, say, just like crazy, stupid, you know, yeah. grandpa type shit or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> balls of fury in my ass. I had balls of fury in 21 coming out of now. <laughs> I was fucking everything that moved. <laughs> there's a cream for balls of fury. Yeah, there's a what? <laughs> there's a cream for that. <laughs> I got a cream for that, boy. See me afterwards. You don't know how to play marbles. I'll show you how to play marbles. Three zeros. They need to cut a finger off if you don't win or something like that. Yes. There needs to be like real stakes involved. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Or uh, you, other people just get to pelt the pelt loser you. with right. the marbles. <laughs> there's a paintball gun modified for marbles. Yes. And you have to take three in the nuts. Yes. <laughs> That yeah, is the sport I would watch. Balls of, <laughs> sure, but balls of bruising. It's not a good way to move along. 
Okay, so okay, that's not a good balls, way to move along. All right. The marbles. I had so. to start slow, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work my way up here. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. To, now, here's one that I didn't even know existed until I started actually looking. When I thought about it, I started coming up with lots of examples of things that I've seen on TV that are considered. They call them sports or are on sports channels, but clearly, you know, might might be hard. This one might actually be considered a sport. Okay. Because of the simple fact that there's much pure physicality of this skill skill i don't know if skill yeah. but it's physicality yeah and that is professional tag your it oh and this has been going on <laughs> tag your it tag professional tag professional tag now let me try and explain there is a let's call it 40 by 40 ring that is <laughs> encased in pex, uh, plexiglass. This isn't in a park somewhere? Like where it's in a stadium. Make, okay. It's in an actual stadium. Not a small stadium, but a stadium, right? And they have put all kinds of what I would call obstacles mm-hmm. around inside of this ring. They There are bars, there are ladders, there are platforms, there are overs, there are unders, there are all kinds of things in the middle and the whole goal is to see how long you can stay away from the other person. That's the classic. That's classic tag, right? Tag, yeah. So you get so you get placed in one place, and then you say go, and everybody and the guy, the one guy who's being chased, runs. Right? Mm-hmm. He goes through the through this and up that and down this. It's like I pop. Mean, is it two people? Two people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One chasing one, one getting yes. chased. One, you know, one. One has the tag and one's giving it to the other person, just like the old <laughs> right, days. Right. When it was That's out like of I sport. remember it. That's right. <laughs> so the whole object is to try and evade the your other the other person yeah. by jumping all around, right? It's like parkour, professional parkour, but the whole objective is tag. Okay. So these guys are really in good shape because they got to do a bunch of jumping around and all over the place. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. GMF versus United. Chase one. United evading. Athletes ready! This is it. The final of World Chase Tag. And it is the French versus the Americans. The Americans chasing and chasing well. Set Ruji hunting down Clement Dumais. Strong start. Yeah, see, so, you know, this guy knows hunting. how to do it. Yeah. Now, there's there's clearly a big live audience back there, right? Yeah. Claver's going to the USA. <laughs> He's chasing him down. Oh, tag your in again. <laughs> By the way, these matches last less than 10 seconds. I'm sure. Because it's a 40 by 40 ring. There's not many, many places to go. You can't actually hide under something. He's yeah. going to get you, right? There's no hiding places. <laughs> it's just platforms you. and stuff. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. That's what I tell my children. I'm going to get you. What if I was a professional tagger? <laughs> And in the match, <laughs> USA versus Spain, it's Tag Master Brian Green, also known as Tag Bagmaster. <laughs> Here comes Brian to his signature sound. I'm going to get you! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> athletes ready <laughs> Red says ready I'm going to get, going to get you <laughs> Look how his competitor <laughs> Crumbles in fear <laughs> As he knows the pain <laughs> is coming Once he hears I'm going to get you <laughs> 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 is there a baton? No, involved? it's just a touch. It's just a touch. It's hand only. Gotcha. Yeah, if it was a baton, you just go around whacking each other, <laughs> breaking arms. Like, uh, what if you had a police sift or whatever they call those things, like a blackjack, and you were just smacking people in the eye? Oh, he lost an eye, but I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Strikes fear Tag, in you the are heart, <laughs> the heart of men. <laughs> Brian coming, it's striking fear in everyone in the arena. They know it's coming. There it is, the signature. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> tag, you're it. Tag, tag, you're it. <laughs> and he just won $50,000. Someone, Bam. there's fifty thousand dollars at stake here. Fifty thousand dollars for tag. God, you're it. Wow. God, I never even liked this game when I was a kid. It was so no. boring because it was just like we were in a big field and be like tag. You're it. Yeah, you run away I mean, from each other. You, you tag somebody. Yeah, I was. That's it. I was then more brainy. Like, yeah. yeah, I liked you know games like uh, yeah. Uh, which girl can I kiss today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. Chase two. GNF evading. Athletes running. 
<laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> we will have a new name on the trophy. It might well be GNF. Ben Alawafi bouncing off the tilted cube. Chasing Seth Ruchi, who goes down, but he was tagged anyway. Now, these literally, these matches last for three to five seconds. Yeah, because it seems it's, like it. Yeah, it's almost over. It's not the most inter- it's, it's fun to watch them bounce around, but it's not the most interesting sport in the world. It, yeah. it lasts there lasts so little time, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of strategy to it except just try and like get away. I mean, <laughs> it's just get like you? actually that is the strategy. <laughs> I have to get you. He's going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Run faster. <laughs> Chase free, united, evading, zero all. Athletes ready. <laughs> Davis Vasconcelos. Goes up to the ridge, looking to descend on Belano Afiyus. In the wrong part of the court, there is no escape there, Ben 10. Landed straight on top of the neck, spiked him. There is no, no escape, escape anywhere, literally. You're trapped in a glass yeah. case. <laughs> just wait until someone touches we you. We just realized how stupid this really is. If they put together a whole arena floor of like places to hide and stuff right. like that, Right, well that's what I was thinking, that is it like a awesome. make-believe forest? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you could kind of hide behind Absolutely, a now you're, now you're yeah. getting it. A bush. Yeah. And through the and through the holler you would hear. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get you. you, you. It's like Hunger Games. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs>